AccuStats Video Productions presents from Louisville, Kentucky, the 2006 8th Annual Derby City Classic. Along with Freddie Benavegna, I'm Bill in Cardona. Freddie, this has been some kind of a tournament. 420 some odd players entered the one pocket segment of this tournament. And our feature match this evening slates two really, really strong and very aggressive players in Tony Shohan from, I believe he's from Seattle. Seattle, Washington. Oh, Sacramento, California. Thank you, Pat Fleming. Sacramento, California. And obviously, uh, Ag uh, Alex Peggy Lyon, one of the premier nine ball players in the world today. And I might mention a very, very good one pocket player. Have you played either one of these gentlemen, Freddie? No, Alex came to Chicago when uh, down from Canada when he was just a kid, about 15 or 16 years old. And uh, uh, at that time, I was very paranoid about all uh, Filipinos. So <laughs> I, uh, he didn't get to beat me out of anything. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, they say that he shoots as well as anybody in the world. He just, he just won the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships not too long ago. That's a nice little shot. Well, you know, uh, Shohan's really not going to waste too much time when he's at the table. He's such a natural player, excellent shot maker, excellent bank pool player. Uh, you know, he's, he's really going to be a, a challenge for Paddy Lyon in this match. What do you like here, Willie? To keep the, uh, the tempo, I'll keep the, the move up uh, for uh, Alex. He broke, and he has, a, he has an advantage. He's got balls on his side. Now he's got a got a protected advantage some kind of way. Well, there's really not much he can do to protect it other than to play an aggressive shot by kicking it to the third That was my shot. And going up table with the cue ball. He'll hit it with some speed. Now he'll go up table. That's my shot. Okay. He would have liked to hit the thin, the 13 a little more thinly, you know, than going up table but further with the cue ball. And then if he would have done that, this shot would have been much more effective. But, uh, you know, that's a very, very difficult shot to judge and execute. So, uh, you know, he, he had the thought process was real good. Shohan at the table. Not considered a real deliberate player, but uh, at this time, it's a uh, situation that's developed here where he uh, may not know what to do, so therefore he's going to think it out. Yeah. Nothing much here, maybe go with the two ball. Repositioning the two ball, and most importantly, the cue ball very closely to that bottom cushion, actually limiting packing line, what he can do in terms of, you know, playing position or repositioning the cue ball he didn't do he, he didn't do too much though uh, Alex got plenty of options here and one thing you should think about doing right now and it's it, this is something you, this is a, a key in, in one pocket the three and the what is that the ten right they're tied up now one of the first things you should try to do is to open up the balls that are tied up in front of your pocket that's the first thing you want to try to do I kind of like this shot the 13 and the 9 are on the right side of the rack. If the 13 is kissing the 9 enough, he can shoot into the 13, controlling the cue ball. The 13 will then carry him off the 9, going in maybe in front of his, side, his pocket or possibly even in his pocket, providing that the kiss is there. I don't think it is. Take a look. Well, okay. it, it looks like it's not going to be uh, he's gonna enough. Have to, he's going to have to kind of cut it into that position. Oh, now, that was a nicely executed shot. Notice how nicely he struck that bank, Freddie, mm -hmm. repositioning both the cue ball and the object ball, you know, in a pretty good positions on the table. I think he's going rail first here. That's exactly what he's done. Notice how beautifully he controlled the cue ball on that shot. It's John Smith. I like to I like to mention that the man to my to my left, Freddie Benavegna, has just been recently inducted into the Bank Pool Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Freddie! Thanks a lot, Bill. We had the dinner last night. It was a really uh, really fun event. Uh, my fellow inductees were uh, Leonard Bugs Rucker, great and player. my uh, great friend and great player, and uh, Louisville's finest Truman Hogue. Uh, everyone knows Truman, of course. The great team man, and uh, the, the, there were uh, there was an induction for the guy, a couple of guys that had passed away.
Cornbread Red Birds at uh, Billy Birds, Eddie Taylor, and Gary Spade from Cincinnati. Very deserving group, uh, Freddie. Very deserving group. And notice the shot that Cho Han just shot. The one ball wasn't positioned closely or even in 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 the corner pocket or even close to the corner pocket. But the position he's left the uh, pack line left him with the cue ball created big problems. Cho Han really exercised good judgment in pocketing the one and freezing the cue ball on the red three. Now Paggy Lyon's really restricted here, Fred. He's just going to go off the red and go directly up the table, which I don't like this because he's giving him a free look at the, uh, was that the 14 ball? Right. The 10. Well, for the ball the, in front of his pocket there. <coughs> Excuse me. For the position that he shot from, frozen to the three ball, you know, he really didn't have any options. Well, he had an option. Shot. I would have taken a two rail kick safety. Uh, took a scratch. I'd have kicked underneath that, the ball at the back end of the table off the long rail. And so he wouldn't have a view of my pocket or the ball in front of my pocket. Okay, well, your choice was an excellent choice now that I look at it. Using, using the eight and the four ball in the center of the table for blocking balls. Exactly. Excellent shot, Freddie. And there's the reasons why you were inducted. <laughs> <laughs> also, they had the, the uh, one pocket Hall of Fame induction this year. Uh, and uh, some uh, good friends uh, went in, my, my roommate, or I say roommate, we hung out in the same room. Artie Bodendorfer was inducted into One Pocket Hall of Fame. Artie Bodendorfer, relatively an unknown champion, but nevertheless still <laughs> a, really a top champion One Pocket player. And one of the old timers and all time greats, uh, Marshall Carpenter, the squirrel from Tuscaloosa. Marshall Carpenter regarded as one of the strongest, not only One Pocket players in the world at one time, but also he played pretty good nine ball as well. Yes, he did. The uh, inductees rounded off with uh, Eddie Kelly among the living and uh, Steve Cook. The late Steve Cook. The late yes. Steve Cook from Lima, Ohio originally. He was also inducted. And Steve Cook actually is too nice of a guy to be the player that he was. Exactly. He was a real fuller. <laughs> yeah. He definitely could get action no matter where he went. He just looked like, uh, you Sunday know, he looked boy. harmless. He <laughs> looked like he just left Sunday school. Yeah. This is, uh, to me, this, uh, I don't know. I didn't like it. I kind of liked it. You know, you know what he, the thought pattern he had was, Backing the two, obviously trying to pocket the two, and then doing something with the red three, possibly going into the stack, or even backing the three and trying to run some balls from that position. Now, the bank that he shot, you know, because you're an excellent bank pool player, wasn't that difficult of a bank. But he's giving Tony a look at his hole. Tony, a very aggressive player. I mentioned that earlier in the telecast. Very aggressive player. We may have a chance to see him use his aggression. Wow, nicely executed shot, repositioning the cue ball nicely for the eight. Now the five nine combination is available. I don't, you know, it wouldn't be a bad idea for him to shoot that now because he's got a nice angle. He's got the three ball for a position ball after playing that combination. So he's opting to shoot the eight. Watch out, he missed the eight, and it's really uncharacteristic of Tony to miss a ball. You know, the character difficulty of the, uh, 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 with that ball carry. He may it have had that combination that on his mind, Will, and that, 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 that might have divided his attention enough to uh, shoot, he shoot the combination, or shoot, shoot the, uh, the eight ball, and uh, might have divided his attention enough to cause him to miss that ball. Something that he really couldn't afford to have happen playing a guy like Paggy Lyon. Paggy Lyon is really, and they call him the Lion, and there's reasons why. Because there's a guy that's really fearless, and when he attacks, he's really ferocious. This guy can really play. He'll just come up for the six. Or the, oh, he drew it nicely. Come yeah. on, he's got the six. He would like to drop for the nine in the, in the five position near the hit, near the uh, foot spot here. One cushion softly. 
high passing the nine. Perfect. Now he's you know he's got a lot of options here. I don't think Shohan's going to make another appearance back at the table in this in this particular game, Fred. Pagalai now has uh, four, Archer, seven, eight, eight nine, twelve, uh, four balls. He needs four. We'll just stop and give himself a little angle. Come across. Either angle will suffice on this shot. If he goes too far, then he can go cross table for the four. Or that's the seven on the other side. Now this shot has to be hit not only cleanly, but it has to be hit with very accurate speed. He's going to play position possibly for the four ball which is across the table, or maybe, no, he's going up table for the 13. A little more margin for error on that particular shot. And being the excellent shot maker that he is, distance doesn't present much of a problem for a guy like this. Just gonna roll down the table. That's how cleanly he struck game ball. <laughs> okay. You know, Shohan, a very aggressive player, you know, excellent player, took his eye off that shot, you That's know, well, quite costly. Because there was eight not waiting, <coughs> available for him after, on his shot after making that combination. But I really like that shot that you pointed out when, when Paggy Lyon was down in, uh, at the uh, foot end of the table, frozen to the three ball. You know, he opted to go up table, leaving distance for, uh, for Tony. But he didn't hit it with the speed that he wanted to hit it with. But, in, but nevertheless, you know, he shot a fairly good shot from the position it was in. But your shot, in my opinion, after you described it to me, was t definitely, clearly the correct shot. Thank you, Bill. I intend to be right a few more times tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Tony missed hit the break, you know. And he's really got his, his game a little bit back together. Fortunately for Chohan, he really didn't sell out anything, you know, offensive here for, for Packet Lion. But he has to start, start executing a little bit better. He's playing one of the premier players in the world in Packet Lion, and he really can't afford to make any more mistakes. In the meantime, the way the balls were broken, when you consider position of the cue ball in relation to that side rail, Baggy Lions got some problems out there. <clears throat> it looks like another uh, take a scratch for me. That's what I would do. Maybe just two rail and go underneath that ball and try to freeze on top of that ball that's in front of uh, Tony's pocket. Just freeze up to the ball. This is a little, you know, he's going to try to execute it this way, but you see what happened when he did that. Now he, he, he left him some air. Yeah, if you can see the pink ball, which is the four ball on his, on uh, line side of the table, obviously is a free bank into the pocket with the possibility of running a lot of balls and perhaps maybe even running out. Evidently he can't see the left hand side of the four ball to bank it cross corner. So now he's gonna have to do something a little bit differently. He must protect the balls in front of his pocket when he leaves the table. He cannot allow, he cannot allow. He could see it, huh? yes, he could see it. Well, he banked it into the stack, which was a very effective shot. But equally as important, he controlled the white ball. He didn't let Packy Lyons see the 15 For the on bank. the other side of the table exactly to bank it in his pocket. So therefore, that, that shot was a really well thought out shot and nicely executed. Alex is wisely leaving the two and eight ball just how they lay because they, they're favorable to him, the way they're laying. There's a nice little shot. Right, repositioning the cue ball behind the 13, very closely positioned to the green six, not allowing Shohan at the table to do very much. 
Well, he can see the three. He'll follow up now, making sure that he doesn't leave the six. Okay, well, he came off the nine. Same type of a thought. Now, if he's allowed uh, Paggy Lion to see the 15 ball, then he's, he, then he's allowed Paggy Lion to work out of this break. Looks like he gave maybe he was, looks like he gave him a window to that ball cross corner. Yes, he did. Okay. Well, you, you know, you know, when you shoot a shot like the shot that, that Shohan shot. Oh, wait. Now, do you see the value of leaving the two and eight, as I mentioned earlier? Oh, now absolutely. Gonna, this is his next shot to give to get him out. He can get out here now. Yeah. Not only were the two and eight position where Shohan couldn't back it in Pagulain's pocket, but it was also a position where uh, later on in the rack, if Pagulain positioned the cue ball on this side of the table, the combination was available. But on the shot that Shohan shot to left Packet Line this opportunity, it was absolutely imperative that he positioned the cue ball to where Packet Line couldn't do what he did. He had a little funny uh, angle there because the, the cue ball had just sort of buried itself underneath that ball on the rail by uh, Tony Chohan's pocket, so he couldn't really hit the combination the way he wanted to. The only thing I can really see he has here, Freddie, is you have to come off the eight, reposition and cue ball behind the six, or close to the six, cutting off any, you know, aggressive shots for Chohan. Looks you know. like that's what he's going to do, Billy. Yeah. So therefore, by positioning the cue ball behind the six, he's not going to allow Chauvin at the table to reposition any ball that will give get Paggy Lyon a problem. It may be an up-table game from this position, Freddie. Well, he just he didn't go real strong with the shot. Yeah, and, and not only that, he allowed he allowed uh, Shohan at the table to do something with the red three. You know, he can cross the red three and just go up table another three, two to three feet, you know, near the five and 14. Now this shot has to be hit with real good speed. I don't like this, what he's doing here. He's got a, he's got a, a superior position and he's now negating it with that particular shot. This is going to be an up table game, Fred. Well, settle down. This, this game might take a while. Just with one shot, he could have stopped this up table game because he did have much the best position in terms of how the balls were positioned. Well, he probably now thinks that uh, it's an advantage if the, the, the game is played up table. It's an it's the advantage is to him because uh, he's got a little more experience playing one pocket. I th if you wanted to go get a beer, uh, you folks out there, and uh, <laughs> maybe a sandwich, it, it, you could do it. You can come back. The game will still be going on. So now's the time to go. And while you're out there, I wouldn't mind a hot dog with mustard. <laughs> Bring me back something. <laughs> Bring us back, me and Willie. And then, well, anyway, this tournament has turned out to be probably the best action tournament in the world for, and for quite some time now. You know, I don't know how many people's gathered here in Louisville, possibly six, seven hundred players. You know, it's just absolutely amazing the amount of people that have the interest to come from wherever they've came from to come here, watch the action, get in the tournaments, and then it's just a real happening thing. Well, it's, it's unheard of to have the kind of uh, fields that they have at these tournaments. 400 entries, 480, 500 entries in a, in a tournament. They used to have troubles filling up 32 player fields in some of the tournaments. And it's tournaments like this tournament here that, that creates a lot of interest in the game and just keeps it going. Because whenever five, six, seven hundred people show up to watch a tournament, you know, they're going to go home and they're going to talk about it. And the, and the word's going to spread and the game's going to become much more popular. You know, this tournament's a really an asset to the game. He just wanted to chip off one little ball there. 
in, in the shot he shot certainly wasn't a gimme. It wasn't it wasn't a shot that carried any you know any, any risk, but he hit the center of the pocket. Hit the center of the pocket. Now he's going to go for. He's going to draw the cue ball underneath near the uh, the nine down there and lock him in and make a free shot out of it. Like the only risk he ran with that shot, if he overstroked it, instead of hitting the bottom cushion before pocketing the corner ball, he may have gone straight into the corner ball, following it into the pocket. That was the only risk with that shot. But that wasn't enough risk to not to shoot the shot. To the term from playing it. No, exactly not. Because he really could have put him in trouble there had he hung that ball up, as you can see. Tony's playing a nice shot. This is a... Uh, he, he, he's not panicked from his position, you know. That's a big shot there. Nice, very nice shot. Oh, I really like what he did there, Freddie. You know, he, he used the 11 ball to carry him the 13 off him, repositioning the cue ball close enough to the 14 to really restrict Pack line on what he could do here. Jeanette Lee and Alice Wren to table 15, please. Jeanette Lee and Alice Wren to table 15. So both players played intelligent shots, and that's why they're still in the tournament. Both really excellent players. Well, as Tony's got a got a really terrific nickname, T Rex. Hey, I mean, that's does. that's a very <laughs> intimidating kind of a nickname. To say you're going to go play T Rex. And T Rex repositioned the cue ball very closely to that bottom cushion. And you know, it may seem a little inconsequential to some people, but if you can reposition the cue ball on or even near a cushion, leave your opponent only that position to shoot the cue ball from, eventually you're going to break him down. Something your friend from Chicago did quite often, Artie Bodendorfer. Oh, yes. Both these ladies are stars in the WPBA and Drawing the ball against Artie was, was seldom an option because you never could could get up under the, underneath the ball to be able to draw it. You're always so close to the rail. All you could ever do is follow. Former world nine ball champion, former world trick shot champion, former U.S. Open nine ball champion, two-time winner of the Challenge of Champions, winner take off in Indianapolis, Indiana. Please welcome the Black Widow, Miss Jeanette Lee. Thank you. And uh, by the way, this is her first uh, tournament since like May. She had back surgery and uh, she's back and she's a mom. Too. Anyway, good to see you, Jeanette. Okay, uh, her opponent sponsored by uh, Tim. We're just sparring a little back and forth, trying to also reposition the balls and to, so somebody could gain some kind of a, probably a, uh, just a free bank. Straight back or three rail in the corner. I kind of like the way Tony handles that cue ball. He's got a real strong stroke. He gets it back, which Pagaline failed to do it this time. But when, when Tony's at the table, you know, he seems to be able to, if not give it, get, not given a shot, to get that cue ball back down toward this bottom cushion. And I really can't overemphasize the importance of doing that, but it's such a strong, strong advantage if you can reposition the cue ball near a rail. If, obviously, if you don't make it. Now, once again, utilizing his great banking skills, hitting it with good pocket speed. Oh, Notice position good. of the cue ball. Had he not made that ball, Peggy Lyon would have had anything to shoot at. He didn't have much margin of error, too, to make it uh, to get past that nine ball. There wasn't much margin of error because the nine ball was uh, did present an obstacle. So he hit it absolutely perfect, and the ball just just barely went past the nine, and then broke towards the pocket and went in. Now this shot carries a little bit of a risk here. And as you notice, the nine would have gone, the five goes, and Paggy Line, being an excellent shot maker that he is, you know that shot carried a lot of risk and pressure for Shohan. But, uh, but nevertheless, in spite of all that, pocketing it very cleanly. He'll then draw the ball behind the 14. Oh, hit went into the 14. Oh, he's an excellent shot maker, as you can see. Yeah, that was, he shot that with plenty of authority. Mm -hmm. He's a fearless player. Now, there's a shot that he 
should have pocketed because I thought he finally got himself in pretty good position. It was close to the object ball, and that was the shot that he hit poorest of all. Exactly. That was easy compared to those other ones he brought. And he got a little break because the uh, those balls down uh, the <coughs> down the rail there by Pagaline's uh, side, they got tied up. up he's got the he bank here, and this is this is not a wonderful bank. Oh, he's going to hit it. Oh, ho, ho, I like the way he hit that. Most guys slam that bank, and there's 9,000 bad things could happen when you do that. Yeah, a lot of bad things can happen. And when you're playing on the diamond table, the rails seem to be hitting, banking a little shorter than most tables. And you normally hit that bank short, and if you hit it short, it goes on the other side of the table. And sometimes you hit it even a little bit long, and, it, and, it, and you miss it long, and it hits the other point on the side, and, and then goes, it goes on the other side of the table. Goes back on the other yeah. fellow's pocket. So there were, there's a lot of bad things that can happen on that bank if you hit it hard. And that's why Freddie said, I like the way he hit it. He hit it with real good speed. That was a little, little bit of a haphazard shot right there, Freddie. I don't particularly care for that shot. And Paggy Lyon, even though he's over top of the 13 ball, cue ball positioned very closely to the 13 ball, this shot surely shouldn't present much of a problem for a shot maker with the shot making skills of Paggy Lyon. Cleanly struck ball. Boy, boy, boy. Now he's got himself a two rail bank on the 10. That's exactly what he wanted. He played for that. Mm, he certainly did. And if you notice the position he's left himself in, if he makes this, he's going to have he's going to have an option of either shooting the five or the 14. Well, he wasn't able to put it down. And the reason he wasn't able to put it down was because had he hit it a little more accurately, he probably would have lost the cue ball. Sally got some sort of a shot. But uh, knowing that, he repositioned the cue ball and hit it, you know, reasonably well. So therefore, he really got the maximum out of that effort. Score of this game is four to three. Peggy Lyon. And one game to nothing. Yeah, you really got to pack a lunch if you're going to beat Pag and Lion. You know, he's going to keep you in trouble. He's going to make you work. And when he's given it an opportunity, he's going to make good with it usually all the time. You know, he's really amassed a lot of, you know, super credentials for the short period of time he's been playing professional pool. And uh, he's trying to thread the needle here. Oh, boy, that's not a bad shot. I mean, the way he hit it, I mean, I didn't like it, but. Uh, well, he repositioned, worked out okay. he repositioned the cue ball nicely with the shot, you know, and, and if he misses the shot, it, it'd be uh, See, right, this so is nicely struck ball. This is the stuff that Artie never did. Now, what happened there is, is a, is a, is a, doesn't seem like a mistake, but what he did is he gave up the move. He, you know, he could have kept the move on by playing some kind of a shot, uh, maybe working with the eight ball. Alex could have worked with the eight ball possibly, or and and kept him on the defensive. As it was, he took that shot, a marginal shot to take. And once he missed a shot, he had lost the move, like in Chester Checkers, which allowed Tony to shoot that five ball and hang it in front of his pocket, and he's gained the move back. Now, now, now Paggy Lyon's got a decision to make here. This is not a shot that carries no risk, obviously. Okay? So, therefore, it's not an easy shot. If he happens to miss it, show him make it two or three balls here. This shot, oh, my you know, he could have gotten two or three balls and he missed that. Maggie Lyon, knowing that, hit it. He took his time and make sure he hit it cleanly. He didn't hit it as cleanly as he wanted to, but clean enough to get it. And that's, you know, that's what makes champions champions. When they're challenged to shoot a difficult shot, they put it down, you know. And if they continue to do that, their opponents continue to get weaker and weaker and weaker. And that's just the way it goes. Now, I, like I mentioned before, I really like the way Shohan handles that cue ball. Once again, repositioning it very, very, very nicely on that bottom cushion. Now, 
Now, Pag, you're lying. He's got some problems here. If he comes off the 8, he runs the risk of selling out the cross corner on the 14. If he comes off the 13, he runs the risk of selling out the 14. He's got problems here. I like him coming off the right side of the 14, positioning cue ball to the right of the 13 here. But if he does that, he runs the risk of pocketing the 14 off of possibly the one or the five. Well, so, uh, the, I, the shot I would like, I'd like the eight ball. He just try to bank the eight ball cross corner. It's laying real good. The eight cross corner hit the right side of the eight ball. It'll run into the five. The cue ball with a little speed will two rail the ball to the left and uh, knock the five and the eight bolt over to a side and reposition the whole deal. You know, the shot he shot was the shot I, I, I pointed out, but look what happened. He didn't reposition the cue ball where he wanted to. Your shot may have been a better shot. You know, Shohan's a very dangerous offensive player. Excellent shot maker. Didn't hit it thinly enough. Very interesting game. 5 4 and balls in favor of Paggy Lyon. 1 0 in games. This is game number 2. There's a situation that you can get to knock the 14 away pretty easily. But. It's hard to not leave a return bank for uh, Tony. Well, that's not too bad there. He thought it through, and his, his cue ball speed was great. Tony's still going to bank the ball and have a return bank here and bring the cue ball, uh, draw the cue ball down two rails. Yeah, I don't like that shot. I don't he like it, that shot. It, it Very all. poorly struck ball. I just like back and get on his side of the table up table leaving Paggy Lyon down here to come off of another ball and you know he may have had a problem doing that Tony Tony left him possibly a half free bank here now this ball he want, if he banks this ball this he, one I don't think he can baby he's gonna have to give to hit this with some speed he can baby if he, if he hits it short and not long Matchup on 35. Well, he hit it with some speed. But one thing good about hitting banks with speed, providing you know how the table plays, you're much more accurate with the shot. Okay, uh, Jim McGowan. Got about uh, 15 minutes to appear on table number 41. Jim. Of course, McGowan. if you're watching, all good bankers, they hit the majority of their, their shots with plenty of speed. All the great bankers. And when they, when the reason they hit it with speed because they understand how the rails play and they know how the ball is going to depart off the cushion, which increases the accuracy of the shot. I like his rolling on the 14 and That's 1. That's me. Here. That's my shot. That's rolling the on the 14 exactly. and 1. Nothing to do, nothing hard no. you. He's looking at the eight because he doesn't understand, you know, and that's your experience showing up right there, Freddie, because you've been in this position probably 10 zillion times and try to come off the eight, maybe half of them, and do you finally realize <laughs> that's not the shot? <laughs> you know, that's just not the shot. So you got to roll on the 14 and one here. If you try to do something with the eight, you may sell out some sort of a shot. You leave the eight there like a soldier. That's right. a soldier on sentry duty, okay? You got him positioned. Now you try to put some more soldiers into play. So envision, envision the cue ball to the right of the 14. What can he do with the eight? Nothing. Now, well, he's going to run a risk of selling out some sort of a shot here. See all the indecision out there, Freddie? We know that he's saying to himself, now he's whistling. Now, F. <laughs> and Reyes, F. and Reyes has this trait. When he's in trouble, what does he do? He scratches his head. Yeah. He whistles. <laughs> Oh, 
Now, there you go. You better get a rail. It's not yeah. going to get now, one. This is what we're talking about. If you don't like a shot, if there's that much indecision out there, maybe look elsewhere. Look, look right. elsewhere, you know what I mean? He forced himself to shoot that in eight chess, ball. In chess, you move a pawn. By rolling on the 14, that's like moving a pawn. And now Shohan, you know, obviously gained an advantage, not only in the ball count, but also in the position. And that, that shot, rolling on, a, it's an aggressive shot also because you're opening up the lanes for two banks. So even if he could play safe off the eight ball that you left up there, he's gonna, it's going to be very hard to keep, to, for him to keep you from having a bank at the 10 or the 14 or the, the 1. Exactly. I like, I like Shellhand repositioning the cue ball behind the 10 here if he can do that. He didn't think of that. Uh, really. No, well, well, maybe he couldn't have done it. He could have if he loaded it up. Okay, that's... That was that, I thought that was a, a low risk shot, and if you want to do a little something, put some uh, whipped cream on the shot. Put a little extra sauce on the stone. That's right. Put some sauce on a little. And, uh, <coughs> it's got a two railer. It's, this is a, it's a tough hit to make, but for these guys, they, they usually execute the shot pretty good. And he can really run the risk of following it like he did because of the position of the 13. He hit that ball very cleanly. Notice the position of the 13. Sometimes when you hit that shot, you scratch in the corner pocket if you follow it. Considering the position of the 13 precluded him then from scratching into the corner pocket. Therefore, by knowing that, obviously the accuracy of the shot now increases. He... Uh I think he corner hooked Alex. Which, no, Alex uh, is not corner hooked here. You mean corner hooked him from the eight? Corner hooked on the eight. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, he's got a shot here. He's gonna. I think he's just gonna gonna play. Try to play both balls. Which, uh, if if it's laying, if you can handle a cue ball, it's not such a bad shot. You know, the the cue ball is lying a little high on this, and he's frozen to the cushion. He's not going to be able to control the cue ball, and possibly not even the t the up the top ball, the 10 ball, so therefore some bad things can happen to him if he opts to shoot this shot. It, it, it's it obviously has to be hit right really well. It's a little high. You're, yeah. you're right. The, the cue ball's a little high on it. Right. So therefore, if the cue ball is a little high in this shot, you're going to have a problem controlling the up, the top ball, the 10 ball, and also the cue ball. And, you know, he may not like it because of that reason. He trails in, ball, in the ball count 6 to 5, and he really can't afford to sell out a ball putting show in on the hill. going after the five ball. That's not too bad. All right, we have a matchup on table 42. No, I wouldn't fool with these balls right here if I was Shohan because the, they favor his pocket and he has six balls. I wouldn't have fooled with that ball. Now he's left Paggy line across corner bank on the 10. And notice the position of the cue ball, okay? Plus he's opened up the one ball for a straight back. Right. Well, yeah, it was, it was a really, it was a very, very poorly thought out shot. So he's left back line options with the S. Table 36, Michael Pettit versus Jeff Everett. Paggy Lyon, uncharacteristically, oh, hit that ball poorly. Ah. And, you know, and he doesn't often do that. Well, one option also was to bank the ball cross corner with a little less English and try to just tickle off the side of the five and eight and make the bank and, and run out, open up those balls and run out. That was a yeah, that, real that was high another, speed shot. That was another another shot that was available to him, a little more of an aggressive shot. Especially when shot. you're behind. He's, he, he's behind at the point. And he could, those three balls would win the game for him. Yeah, he is behind, but not that much, not that much of a margin, the slimmest of a margin, matter of fact, six to five. So therefore, you really can't find fault in the way he shot it. But the other shot was available, providing it laid real good and you had the confidence to shoot it. It did lay pretty good. It's, uh... I like what Paggy Lyon's done here. Repositioning the cue ball near this cushion, he will then have the first offensive shot from this position. He's going to play a two in the corner, hit it with speed, and <laughs> the cue ball's back where you... you <laughs> That's what I'm talking about with, with, with right. the show hand. I've noticed when show hand leaves the table, with the exception of, of the preceding shot, not the last one, but the shot that preceded that one, 
the cue ball is normally positioned close to that bottom cushion. Big, big advantage for Johan. He's able to do that. And that's something if he could develop the touch to get that cue ball back, it's worth more than a ball. Sure, because Ale Alex's options are very limited here. Mm -hmm. Not too many people can shoot from where Alex is right now. Not too many. Or maybe not any. Sometimes there's, there's simple solutions. One of the solutions people don't even think about is you just roll up to the five ball and knock it up slightly and use and the five ball will then snooker the other snooker the, the player on the one and the other. He's gonna do it. Well, see, he's gonna do it. He but he didn't hit it well because he, he left him the two in the corner. No, he left him the two in the corner on the one. Now this ball carries a little bit of a risk if he hits it poorly of selling out the ten, but not enough risk not to make for him to not to shoot the shot. This is definitely the right shot because if he hits this good, I think he has to elevate here, Fred. He's gonna roll it. Hey, uh, like He's gonna roll it. If you wanted the players we need today. We talked about concession of games. Do not concede any nine balls. It's going to cost you a game penalty. You're going to lose the game that you can see. Well, I don't know what he plan he's for planning for on doing seven. here. If he's planning on crossing his ball. I think ball. he's trying to spin the ball in and cross it. And it's, it's going to be very difficult not to leave something here. Or. I mean, he's he's got to leave something here. Uh, what, what could have. Uh, the only break he caught is he, he put him up in the air. That's uh, kick behind this one. Nicely struck. He didn't really get deeply enough behind the balls to control the cue ball, but he did reposition the other one ball nicely. Bag and line will have a bank here, but this bank he has on the eight ball, you know, carries some risk. Because now he can sell out something here, and he can sell out the eight too. Because if he doesn't hit the eight cleanly, it may double that corner down there and go on uh, Shohan's side. We hit it very well. Table ten. <laughs> Shelly says, I'm going to jump the 10 ball over the 5. You left me this jump shot that I know I know well, but not well enough to shoot it now. <laughs> In practice, maybe I'll do this. But uh, I'm ahead 6 to 5. I'm going to go ahead and give you this ball. Leave you in the corner pocket. I'm not going to try. I shouldn't try to take this ball out. I shouldn't try, I shouldn't, I shouldn't, I shouldn't try, try to take, take this ball, ball out, out, okay? <laughs> I mean, uh, what is the upside? Evidently, he didn't think it like that. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's got the lead. Give him the ball. You know, and now he gave him the game and he possibly still, he, the match. He had the, the score would be tight. He'd still be in position. He's got, and he had a very strong ball. That five ball is really hard to move. He's got a ball that's locked in. Well, he gave that's him the dug match. In. He gave him the match with that shot. If you can look back in this match and think of one shot that, you know, really cemented the match. If Pagalang goes on to win this match, it was that shot right there. So you people out there that are watching this tape and listening to Freddie and I, take advantage of it because, you know, shots like that are game-turning shots. Either you stay in the game and you fight hard or you run the risk of losing not only the get ball, the game, but the match. And you really never want to give your opponent that that kind of a lift. That gives your opponent a tremendous, tremendous, that's a very major mistake that didn't have to be. And the, the psychological effect is tremendous. And another point I like to bring up, this is a four and a half inch pocket or maybe even slightly smaller than that. And they're cut so where when balls are in the pocket, they just don't come out. They don't come out. They don't come out. They don't come out. You know, if you're playing on a larger pocket with a little different cut, you can shoot that shot, the ball will come out, you know, and, and you can hit it, hit it better because you just have more room for, and more margin for error and more ability to get the ball out, but not on this table here. Shohan should have realized that. Look, now he's going to lose this game at, on this inning here. So 
So he lost, uh, Chohan lost the move and the game. He's going to have to elevate here. I don't like following this ball because the scratch is too uh, too available for him. He's going to have to elevate. He's going to have to say to himself, okay, buddy, elevate here. Yeah, that's what he's doing. He's elevating. He's going to punch it into the pocket. They call it a punch stroke. Oh. Well, if Shohan should consider himself quite really fortunate to get back to the table. Uh, now the score is 6-5 in, in favor of Pagan Lion. Shillingham does have a bank here. It's tough to beat the kiss. We'll see if what he, if he knows what to, what to do. It's a tough kiss to beat. And to beat it, he's got to he's got to load it up with inside. Got to inch. load it. Okay. It's the only one way. You must load. But being close so close to that rail, he, he might not be able to load it. He might not be able to load it, and he wasn't. But that's what you had to do on a bank that carried the angle for so that he, particular. What bank he did carried. is he let up on the last instant. He didn't. He didn't want to put all that much that he needed <laughs> he, in his stroke, just quit about uh, three quarters of the way through, and that's why he didn't get the yes, the, that, uh, the action that he needed to beat that kiss. That's very well described there, Freddie, by the way, very well described. And that's exactly what does happen, you know, when, you're, when the cue ball is either frozen or positioned closely to a cushion, you don't want to try to load it up, because you know why? You might miss cue. And right. when you miss cue, you know, forget about it. It's good night, Irene. Excellent struck ball there. Now, I, I mentioned this five ball. You notice this five ball hasn't moved in about an hour and a half. It's rooted into that spot. So now, one pocket players out there, keep think about where that ball is at and how long it's been there. So in your, the strategy of your game, what you'd like to do is you want to you put a ball there. If you have a chance to put one there, by the side pocket to uh, to do it on purpose. You should start thinking about putting the ball there because you see how difficult it is to move it. And it'll be there for a while longer. It's not going anywhere for anything. Now that ball actually favors Peggy Lyon because the only position on the table that Shohan can pocket the five ball in his pocket is a straight in shot. Peggy no, no. Lyon. I, I know what you're saying, Billy, but he could never bring, he can't leave the ball on this side because he could make it. This whole section here is off limits to uh, the cue ball. No, it's not off limits if it's off the rail limit. Look at the, it's right near the side pocket. He's, he can't afford to scratch in the side pocket. That ball favors Peggy, that ball favors Peggy line, that five ball. I disagree. And it also blocks right back banks. I disagree. The, if, the, if, he's, if he has a bank like that, uh, No, that's a that's a powerful man right there. Okay, it's not easy to jump that ball off the table. You know, he hit it with a good, powerful stroke, and he didn't get the cue ball airborne too high, so uh, so it would jump off the table without hitting the ball. A lot of players do that. Well, it'll be interesting to see now. Uh, we'll test each other's theory. If he doesn't move the five ball now, we'll see who. Who this five ball winds up being up? Well, I, I, Freddie, I'm I'm very strongly uh, uh, oppose you here. I, that five ball favors this pocket here. No. <laughs> well, we'll see. That's uh, if he does. He's not going to move it. He doesn't yeah. think it's a problem. That's because that is his pocket over here. He's favoring his pocket. If it didn't favor his pocket, he'd move it. How about if he had a ball hanging in the pocket and, and uh, Tony had a ball and Alex jumped the table? Could he make it then? Well, that's how's how's that's he going to protect that? <laughs> okay. Like he did now, he wouldn't be able to do that, would he? Alex wouldn't be able to do what I, Tony just did. I'm not saying. Yeah, no, see what Tony? See what he just did? That ball? No, he can't shoot. Tony can't shoot that ball in his pocket. No, he can't. No, not Jeez. now. I, <laughs> that's why he favors the other pocket. No, no. It's, that's, believe me, it doesn't work. I, I, I very rarely I disagree with you here, but... <laughs> but no, we usually disagree. <laughs> okay. In, in but, truth. Okay. 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 Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I like the game to go on because... Uh, okay, this is suicide. That's suicide. Okay. Well, no, I mean, once again, I didn't say do that. I mean, come on, I, that's, well, that's certainly not what I meant for him to well, do you know that. What? You wouldn't have done it, but he did. 
So therefore, had not that bomb not been there, that <laughs> line wouldn't be there. <laughs> okay. As the pots and pans would say, any questions? <laughs> okay, game two goes to pad your line, it looks like. So After this pocket hanger is ball, okay. drizzled in. Okay. <laughs> and obviously, Tony, Tony made two glaring mistakes in that particular game. Obviously, one was trying to uh, get the eight out of the pocket, and the last one was. But getting the eight out of the pocket is, is you're giving up the move. That's the point of what happened. Even if, <laughs> you know, you don't know what's. Even if he got the ball out of the pocket, does he, is he a cinch to not leave him a, a, an easy bank and, and give the move back? If he shot the ball in, he's gonna, he keeps the move up. The balls are all on his side, all favor him. The score is tied, okay. But he's still a good size favorite, and he has made no mistake. And he continues to apply pressure, and he stays a move up. Move up means that your fellow has to play safe. That's all you want to do. You wanna, if you keep your opponent playing safe, somewhere along the line, you're going to get a shot and, and, uh, and be able to, to score some points and do some damage. Score is 2-0 now, and uh, Alex is breaking, and it's uh, the session really favors Alex tremendously, especially after he made a nice, solid break. That's a very good break. You know, I really, you know, I, I really think that Johan, his judgment was, was greatly impaired after, parking, after trying to remove the eight. When he did that, his game never, he never recuperated from that. Because shooting that five ball was an indication that he never recovered. <laughs> yeah, how can you shoot that five ball? I, I, that was her. I mean, he tried to make me look bad. That's the only reason I figured he shot it. He wanted to prove me wrong, you know? Well, that's actually a, another factor, you know, that you have to consider. That maybe somebody will think they can do something with it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> because Pagulano, the only way he would have touched that five ball if he had a nice bank on it without running a risk of scratching. Well, That's the only, only way. There's only one place he could bank it. The ball has to be laying absolutely perfect. That's right. So therefore, leave it there because the only way he could shoot it, it was perfect, and it didn't block banks in his pocket. Now this trap's getting uh, kind of deeper and deeper. And Tony has to get a ball on his side some kind of way and provide himself with some kind of an offensive uh, threat. No, I, th I think Tony has uh, has used up his ability to think now. <laughs> what happens? You go on tilt. You yeah, know? yeah. You know, there are times when... You know you, know, you did something so horrible, you know, and you, and you're, you just, you can't, it's not so easy to clear it out of your mind. No, it's right. Exactly right. You know, it's, it's, it's humiliating, and it, it, it puts you in that uh, no thinking mode. See? Yeah, there, there, right there, there, there it is. It's over. You see, he didn't. Well, he got tired of thinking, so he just did something. <laughs> I got tired of thinking. No, yeah, I'm just going right. to do something. That's, you know, that's one I mean, thing about Artie. Artie would stay there till tomorrow, until he came up with the correct solution. <laughs> yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. he would not just shoot. Never, never, never just say, "Okay, I've had enough. Let me just take a slam here and and hope for the best." And if there isn't an out then there's always the option of an intentional scratch. That's right. That's, that's right. When you, if, if you don't know the game well enough to come up with a creative shot or whatever, or, or a, a reasonable solution, you know, the scratch, uh, as, as, as the old great player Marcel Camps, it'll, maybe it'll buy you some time. It'll buy you time, and it'll also give you an opportunity to see what your opponent's going to do, because he might not do the right thing either. He might. That's ex you give him a chance. <laughs> Yeah, to screw it up. Right. As you take a scratch, it puts it. He, he start. He, he might start inventing gremlins and seeing the monsters in his cornflakes. <laughs> exactly. And uh, he, he'll try something that he doesn't really need to try. Right. And he may say, "Oh, I'm not going to take a scratch. I, I need this ball. <laughs> I'm going to do this over here. I think. Yes, I can. I think I can do this. And when you start saying, "I think I can do this," instead of "I can do this," 
sometimes you don't do it. You know, and that intentional scratch, people, is a big, big, big tool. Trust me, very valuable tool to have in your arsenal. The ability and the know-how and the willingness to take that intentional scratch. The willingness. The willingness is the key word. It brings up a little story. I better say it fast. Looks like Alex is going to be out. When Efren was first came to this country, he didn't. He hadn't. He wasn't playing really great one pocket. So uh, and Grady Matthews was the favorite over him. So they made a, a game. They matched up where they would play even. But I would coach Efren. I was the coach. Mm -hmm. Efren had to shoot what I told him to shoot. Uh, anyway, it was going along fine until one point come up where I told Efren to take a deliberate scratch. And he wouldn't do it. I said, you're in a real bad spot. The only thing to do here, it's, it's, it's not a great thing, but just take a deliberate scratch. I mean, what the heck? You need one more ball. You run 9, 10, 11, 12 at a clip. What's the difference? Ah. Well, the match is over. 3-0. Alex won it. So he wouldn't do it. And he finally went ahead and shot what he wanted to shoot. And well, actually, he, he slowed the game. Listen. And I fired him. But he's I fired <laughs> Efren Reds. That's a true story. It goes back. It was like in Lexington, it. Kentucky. Scratch. I don't need no sticking scratches. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Freddie, it's been a pleasure, really. And you're always a pleasure to work with. Yeah, it's great work with you, know, you again, Well, You know, because you have such a, a wealth of knowledge playing all games. And once again, it showed up here playing. Well, listen, box. I got I, I to plug my book, Banking with the Beard. Please, uh. Don't forget to buy my book, Banking with the Beard. It's out there. It's on and, the, uh, and I read, all over the internet. I, I, re I read that book. It's an excellent book. A lot of great stuff in that book. And if you pick it up, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay, Some good, good stories, too. All right, Bill. Thank you very much. Okay. Good night, everybody. Okay. In behalf, in behalf of uh, Freddie the Beard, Beth's Freddie Beg the Beg, this is Bill and Cardona saying thanks a lot for supporting AccuStats. Give Pat a call. 1-800-828-0397.